Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Expedition. And in today's episode, we are going to be doing some serious work on our little starter home here. I've got all sorts of stuff. I have been busy between episodes. I've done a little bit of work on these fields. I made uh, this twice as big. This was a 4x4, now it's a 4x8. And I've also smelted all of our ores using the pulverizer and uh, redstone furnaces that we set up last episode. So we've now got all of our ores smelted into ingots. That way we won't have to wait when we make use of them. Um, I should probably put the augments back though so that it actually works for toast again. There we go. That should be good. And we can turn that off and get rid of this. So what we're going to be doing between uh, what we're going to be doing in this episode is we're going to be working on a basement. I've been clearing out some space down here and I also cleared out a little space over here and I found something pretty cool right behind this wall. There's actually a big cave that pretty much runs right into our base and I want to explore that a little bit. But you've noticed I am out of I, I don't have a sword. We did find some weapon cases in previous episodes, so I want to start out by opening one of those. Check this out. This is a uh, this is the weapon case loot mod made by Iskull and his team behind Survival Stories, and it's a really cool mod. Basically, it's kind of like uh, kind of like Counter Strike Counter Strike uh, weapon cases. You open it, it gives you a random weapon, one of twelve, and it can be really good uh, or it can be not so good. This one's all right, seven. Perfect quality, which means it has high durability, but as far as damage goes, not so great. Let's go ahead and open up another one. And this one gives us the Mage Blade. Seven again, perfect quality, but not so great on the damage. I'd like to get one that has better damage before I go into that cave. Here we go, the Heart Spike. Seven damage again. Well... Okay, so we didn't so we didn't do amazingly well with the weapon cases, but that's fine. Uh, we did get three swords, and that will at least tide us over for a while. Let's just take the uh, let's take the heart spike. Actually, let's take the long sword. The long sword is uh, pretty basic. I've also got a couple th uh, craft treasures that we're gonna open up because we might as well. A little bit of gold, a little bit of gold coins, and an emerald. Not too bad. And I'm not gonna have enough space in here for this stuff, am I? Let's just put them, you know what, let's go ahead and make ourselves a garbage can. I think it's time to do that. Um, that will let us easily get rid of items, and I'll just put it right here. I don't need the poison potions, and I don't need the splash potion of weakness either, so we'll just trash that stuff. So, I think we're in good shape. Let's go ahead and take a peek into this cave, see if there's anything cool back here. I was digging out this room because this is going to be our storage room once it's all dressed up and uh, looking much better than it does now. And I just kind of stumbled across this big cave right here. And then uh, there was a creeper, so I ran away. But I figured we'd explore a little bit of it together, get some of these resources going. We are still really low on tin. And because I'm going to use iron chests for my storage this early in the game, I'm also going to need a lot more iron than what I have right now. So, let's see here. Is this dead end? Okay, so it comes to a dead end. Eh, kind of anticlimactic on this side. This is where all the nasty things came from when I got attacked when I first came into the cave. Um, let's put a torch there. We do have more tin up here, though, so that's good. Hmm. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and finish exploring this cave and gathering whatever ores and stuff I can find in here. I'll be back with you in just a little bit. All right, guys, I am back, and I didn't really find much. This is pretty much all I found in the cave. Uh, both sides came to a dead end relatively quickly. There just wasn't all that much good stuff in there. But at least we found some goodies. We found a little bit more iron. We found some stuff. I'll take it. I mean, it's not too bad. I wasn't expecting to find it there anyway, so it's all good. Uh, but let's go ahead, and the first thing that I want to do is start designing the basement that we're going to use. And I'm going to grab some wood. I'm going to grab some cobble. And I'm going to make myself a chisel. There we go. And that is from the Chisel 2 mod. 
And basically it's going to give me access to all sorts of beautiful pretty blocks. So let's start, um, let's go maybe with the detailed cobblestone bricks. That's a texture that I use probably more than I should. But it works out pretty well. And we'll just go like that. There we go. And I think that's what we're going to use for the walls in here. How's that look? That looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. And then we'll put a torch there and there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then for the floor, let's use chiseled spruce because there's a, uh, there's a spruce port for us that's relatively close. And I can get a lot of spruce relatively easily. And I think we'll just put that in as the floor in the basement. How's that look? Yeah, that looks pretty good. This will do. This will do. I'm not looking for a super complicated design. I just want something that's not the, you know, I just mind this out look. Um, so I think this will work nice and simple. It'll get the job done and it will work nicely. So let me go ahead and finish getting this all filled in and I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, I am back. So I got the basement pretty much all filled in down here. And I think what I'm going to do is something like this. I went ahead and used the same texture for the floor, uh, for the ceiling in here as well. And then, as I said, this will be our storage room right here. So let's go ahead and grab, um, I suppose we could use cobblestone for this as well. And let's make maybe these. This looks, uh, these look pretty good and these won't connect. So this is kind of what I'm looking for here. So I'm thinking we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. And on top of each one of these, I'm going to put an iron chest. So that'll be 10 iron chests, which is pretty doable, I think. Let's grab some planks so we can actually make those chests. And let's see, that will be eight, and then I'll need two more. There we go. And let's grab some iron. And there we go, iron chests. All right, so now we've got storage. Uh, I also want to lay a way to label that storage. So I want to go with these... Uh, labels from Bibliocraft. I believe I can make them in spruce as well. Let's just take a look. Yeah, cool. Okay. So let's see here. We need... There we go. All right. So we got 10 labels and 10 chests. And we'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like that. And then we can go ahead and put these labels on here. That is definitely not where that's supposed to go. Label, label, label. And this way we can stay nice and organized. Um, I'm almost kind of thinking, though, that this... It might be better to bump these back a little bit. I think it's fine for now. This is just a starter base. It's okay. It's okay. And then we'll basically just start assigning things to all of these chests. So, for example, in one of them, we'll put all of our ores. And that actually needs to go in there. And we can just do something like that. And these should all fit. Uh, where's the bedrockium? There we go. We want to get that out of there. Now, the way that these labels work is you just shift, right click them with an open palm, and it'll bring up this little interface, and then you can put stuff on it. So, there we go. And we can actually have up to three items on here if we want. So, if I wanted to say, you know, gold, diamonds, and iron, I could do that, and it would appear on the label like that. But I'm just, I just want one ingot on there. I'm just going to have one thing per label, and I'll know that this is my ores chest. So we'll put all of this stuff away in here. I want my chisel back. 
No stealing my chisel. There we go. So I'm going to finish getting all the stuff put in their proper chests, and then I'll come back to you. All right, guys, I am back. I ended up adding um, eight more chests to this whole thing, but everything is all nice and organized. We got our ores, we got our mob drops, we got, you know, all the good stuff. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take this ugly thing and move it down to the basement. So let's go ahead and get to work on that. There's also a few other things that I'm going to need to do. Um... You know, I think maybe I should make myself a crescent hammer, which I actually don't have enough iron for at the moment. Okay, let's resolve that real quick. Uh, let's see, I need you to come out, and you go in there, start pulverizing my iron for me. All right, uh, while we are waiting on that, let's go ahead and make... A couple of things so I'm going to need four tin and one log like that and I can put those just like this and make a cache and the cache will hold on uh, it's basically like a like a a better barrel but bigger it'll hold 10,000 items uh, just like that. There we go. So that's whole, that will hold all of our toast for us. Because obviously, if I'm going to be running the whole base on toast, I'm going to need a lot of space to store all that toast. And that's going to be important. So let's grab the iron while that's going. And let's make ourselves a wrench and a few other things as well. So first and foremost, to make the crescent hammer, I believe it's like that. Yeah, there we go. And that will allow us to easily pick up and move machines. So I can just do that instead of having to mine them. And that will save us a lot of time. And it's just something that I'm, I'm really going to kind of need as we go on here anyway. So uh, let's see. There we go. Everything should be out of here now. I'll put that augment back. And let's just grab all of this stuff. And then we'll take all of this as well, mine our generators, and all should be good. I don't know why I'm still hearing the generating sound, because the generators aren't actually there anymore, but whatever, it's okay. So I'm thinking we're going to want to make this wall, the wall of machines. That's kind of what I'm, I'm leaning towards doing here. So let's go ahead and put, ooh, I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit too. Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's grab a little bit of spruce wood. I almost had forgotten that everything was not beautiful. There we go. So we'll put that here. We'll just kind of move these back. We're actually going to have our, um, our energy conduits back here instead. Where's my cobble? I need a little bit more of this stuff. There we go. Oh, I meant to do the whole stack, not just one block. There we go. That looks good. And we'll put you in right here. Okay, cool. So now we've got our flux ducts and we'll put this over here. And we're going to put a energy cell right there. So let's put our generators down, and that should all be fine. You can kind of see back here, which I don't want. So let's just patch those up. We'll put this here, and that one will end up going there. Okay, cool. So we need to make ourselves an energy cell, which is right here, this leadstone energy cell. We're going to need a few things. The first thing is a frame. So let's grab ourselves some redstone. Also, you need to all get out of my way. You are all in my way right now, and I dislike that. Okay, so let's make a redstone block. Let's grab four leadstone ingots, or four lead ingots. We'll grab that. We'll grab that, and then we need four pieces of glass. Just like that. There we go. 
And that should allow us to make the frame. And then for this, ooh, we need Electrum. Which is gold and silver. Okay, you know what? We'll do this. Silver. Um, do, do, do. I won't need that stuff anymore. Hopefully our pulverizer has enough power in it to, to just make this happen. I think it will. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so one silver and one gold. If we pulverize those together and then put them in a crafting window, that will give us two electrum grit or electrum dust. It's the same thing. Then we should be able to smelt those up into electrum ingots, which we can use. Uh, I have a hammer for a reason. There we go. Uh, which we can use to finish making our energy cell. There we go. And we should have everything else in our inventory already. Beautiful. We now have a leadstone energy cell. And I'm just going to put this thing right here, let it start filling up. And I want it to fill up from the back. And yeah, those can just be yellow. Okay, so this way, all of our power is coming into here. Now, for the rest of this stuff, we're going to have a few other things we need to do as well. So let's grab a few more flux ducts. And let's just kind of run those along back here. Like so. And we put our pulverizer here. Redstone furnace. And a redstone furnace. And then these we are ultimately going to put in something else. Something sneaky. So I think that should work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will work fine. Okay, so we'll do that. Now we need some wood because I want to cover that stuff up. So let's go and make some of those. Oh. And some carpenter's blocks. There we go. And we'll just make a few of those which we can use. I also want one more chest. There we go. We can use those right here. And apply this texture. And then that will cover up these two chests. But the chest can still open. That way it just doesn't look as derpy as all that other kind of stuff that you might expect. So we're good there. Now I also need another augment so that that pulverizer can pull from that chest, and that would be the integrated hopper apparatus. So for that, I'm going to need a little iron, some glass, and some redstone. Um, iron. Glass, and I've got redstone in my inventory already. So I'll make one of those, and then it just gets surrounded by five ingots. And now... We should be able to yank the redstone control out and put that in. And it should now pull from here. So if I put that dirt in. Except dirt, I don't think dirt can be pulverized now that I think about it. Uh, let's try putting cobblestone in there real quick. Here we go. So we put that in. Yeah. Yeah. It'll pulverize into dirt like so. Beautiful. Okay. So, that's all good. Now I need to figure out... Why is this thing not getting power? Hmm. It should be getting power. Is it not connected back here? No, it is. Maybe it's filling up this first, and that's what's going on? I'm not really sure. That's kind of weird. Um, you know what? We'll just change this up a little bit. We'll go like that. And I'll just put the conduits down here 
underneath it. Oh, but I'm going to need more conduits. Okay. That's easy enough. We'll grab some more redstone. We'll grab some more lead. And we'll go energy... Leadstone flux ducts. Here we go. And I'll just make six more because I want to be switching over to Ender I.O. conduits here relatively soon. I don't want to use these for very long. There we go. And then the bottom... We'll make orange. Yeah, there we go. Now it's all filling up. Good, good, good. Okay. So, that's pretty good. And then here, we'll put that right here. We're going to put cobblestone and cobblestone. And what I want to happen is I want the whatever you cook to go into this chest. And then if it's toast, I want it to go into the cachet. So that's what we're going to work on right quick here. Let me get some stuff together, guys, to get this uh, ready to go. And I'll be back with you in just a moment. All right, guys, I am back, and I think I've got everything together, so I made a couple of item ducks and a couple of servos. Now, these are servos, very, very simple to make, and then the item ducks are also really easy to make. It's just a little bit of tin and one piece of lead, and what we'll do is we'll put an item duck there. We'll put a servo on it right here so it registers the chest, and then we will right-click the servo, change this to whitelist, and put that to toast. So basically, if there is toast, it will pull that toast directly into here. And we can test that by putting some toast in. And we can see stored, this goes up. So it'll basically yank the toast out of there and put it in here where it belongs. So I think everything should now be good to go for our little toast machine factory thing. So, let's grab a little bit of wheat. Let's grab just, like, one wheat, and then let's grab some chupacabra meat as well. And we'll just make sure that this works. If we put wheat in, that will turn to toast, which will get sucked out and put into here, okay? If I put chupacabra meat in, which will still double, and is actually a very good source of food once it's cooked... That will stay in the chest. All right. So it is all good. I could probably find a way to make that a little bit better. But I'm going to worry about that in a different episode. Uh, because I am really out of time for this one. This took way longer than I thought it was going to. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I do appreciate it. And it really helps out my channel. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. There are links in the video description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll definitely see you next time.